So, okay, today I will explain you the, the concepts of the Wing Chun lighting system Chisa and the sensor line and the footwork together, how, how they all are linked together, okay? Um, Chisa is generally a method to make your arms or generally your whole body flexible, okay? So, um, but before we go that far, let's start with the center line theory, okay? So everybody understands what the center line is. Generally, when I ask people, or in other Wing Chun uh, methods, uh, like WC, VT, or, or whatever the spelling is, many times people say this is the center line, or, or the center line is the one goes through your head, comes out your butt, you know, like, a, <laughs> like a, 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 it's basically an axis, just like the planet has an axis, uh, we can make, through any object, we can put an axis through, it's all geometrical measurements, mathematics, and uh, since the international language in the world is mathematics, it's not English, it's mathematics, like one times one is one, and it's all over the world the same, so the mathematics we speak, if it's Japanese, if it's Chinese, Turkish, uh, American, German, they all have the same language in mathematics, or physics. So this is what Wing Chun is based on. Wing Chun is a, 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 a based on natural physics, or you can say Taoism, which stands for balance. Right? You hear yin and yang, all these things. And, and I will go in this uh, also what uh, what yin and yang means in Wing Chun or martial arts generally, or, or how, how we make it uh, 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 visible in technical or physical mo movement, yin and yang, okay, motion. So, well, the center line, you need a few things. You need a logical thinking. So the logical thing is, what do we want to protect? Our kneecaps or elbows or our nose? Or what do you want to protect? So just the... So the founders of Wing Chun, this was the first thought when they start to place their hands here in Manza Wuza. So a very, very important when I teach that the students take my experience and make it become his own experience. Mostly what we do, we read books, we watch videos, and then, and then go to seminars and collect movements. There are lots of collectors or fishermen in, in the fishing United States here. There are lots of, of people out there that are fishing in seminars, going to this master and this. What they're all doing is imitating, they're like a parrot. You know, they're imitating uh, other people's motion, but it's not their motion. And it's very, very difficult. So, uh, once you understand the concept of, a, of any kind of theory, and you can explain it back to people in a mathematic scientific way, in that moment, this experience of somebody else's becomes your own personal experience. But if you just imitate and talk after the mouth and imitate the person without uh, being able to explain to other people what you're doing there, and you just say, oh, well, my Sifu showed me. He said, hey, who told you that's the center line? Oh, I read that book, it says so. Remember, a book is always an opinion of one person. It doesn't represent the, 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 the truth really in that sense. It's only one person is true. Or video, uh, it's just motion. Look, books and videos, they both are, are, are good resources to make researches, but if you only get to one source, you have only one opinion. So books gives you uh, maybe historical, maybe theoretical background. Uh, a video gives you emotions, but the, the still you need to the teacher personally, because even here, I will teach Jesus, I will show the concept, people over that side of the camera, they will not feel the touch, there is a pressure. So you need all these three components to make a whole. Okay, so very, very important. So, uh, but if you're in the same system, and since you people know when I train with you what the pressures, where the concept is, and you understand the theory, so the video and the book will help you. But if you're out of the system, it's a little bit difficult because you don't know where the, where the corrections are, or where the mathematics behind this, okay? So where the pressures, how we do this. So very, very important that, that all these three components are together. So anyhow, wait. So what is the center line, okay? So for us, the center line, I can say simply, which many people repeat, is this line. It's an imaginary line from me to the person in front of me. You can say my enemy, my opponent, any, any object or whatever, anything where the danger comes from. This straight line is the shortest line from A to B or from me to my opponent, right? So. And everybody knows this because we keep preaching it all the time. So everybody says, hey, this is my center line. Now I ask you, hey, can you uh, explain to me why it is there, how you find it is there? Because then people say, well, I ask, where is your center? What, what, what do you try to protect? They go from here to the end. The whole body swooping up the center would be about your belly button. But then still, people are not wrong. This is correct. 
But how do we mathematically prove it? So, again, I said, first we need a logical thinking. This means what do we want to protect? So basically we take your top of here to below your groin, so from the big brain to the small brain, or people upside down, big brain, small brain, whatever. So this is the part, right? right? So without the limb, this would be called the trunk. This is where your vital organs are. This is what we want to protect. So if this would be the center line, so some people say, oh, we protect the center line because all the vital organs are along that vertical line, which is not true. My liver uh, is outside, uh, my, my kidneys are outside, my heart is a little bit over here, maybe it's like a throat, it's okay, but, but you have everywhere uh, vital organs. Okay, so it's very, very important that you have to see the whole box. Now, I want to protect this in a frame that, that my range with my, my arms, they're like a bumper on a car, my protection shield has the reach and protect this frame, okay, not just one line. So this line, geographically, measurements, is, is just nothing else than a vertical line. So the vertical line can go anywhere from here. You can have one million, if you want, lines over here. So let's say, if I make my mathematics around this, so I have a vertical line here, okay? And then we have a horizontal line I put here. So my cross, you see, this would be my center point. So I have to put my hands up here, <laughs> right? So we have to be very precise. So what we really want to know is the center of it center point, okay? So this means a vertical midline, which goes right 50% to each side. So the message of a vertical line is what? Defining left from right. So without the vertical line, I could not say from here to here is left, from here to here is right. So this is important for us, so we have uh, um, orientation to say, okay, from which point to where I decide to call it left. So, but since we want to protect equally both sides, so we need a vertical midline, 50% to both. So in that moment, the vertical midline, when it's defined left from right, also creates one dimension. Because from left to right is what we call the width. Okay? So the same job with the horizontal, since we have the trunk, a horizontal midline, which defines up and the bottom and top, so it's the height, it's the second dimension. Right? So the cross point here would be my center point. This is probably for every human, no matter how you build, it's about your solar plexus here. Okay? Now, from this center point, this imaginary line goes straight out. This is your center line. Now, mathematically, everybody can uh, recreate and construct this and understand much better because everybody in the world will understand this. If I would say, uh, just like would uh, use Chinese terms, people don't understand. Like I say, hey, this is a bonsai. First time somebody comes in your school, they say, okay, give me a bonsai. Person could come and say, hey, what's that? Is it a banana? Or what is that? Can I eat it? Because they don't know Chinese. Right? So you have to have mathematical terms to explain to the student the first time, right? because that's what we learn in school. Everywhere in the world, people learn mathematics. Every first grade or middle school, high school, they learn the same mathematics internationally, okay? Or geometry. So if you understand your language. Now, once you have this and this, so you have three dimensions. And if you build of your human keep looking like this, built the same way, have two arms, they stick outside of that frame, we put together, so we create something like a triangle. In this moment, I have, of course, uh, only two dimensions. I have the width and the depth. So now when I do this, the wuzao, we call the wuzao, so this is the attending arm. Okay, so now from the lowest to the highest, I have the height. When I do this, everybody can see from elbow to my finger is the depth, elbow to elbow is the width, and fingertips to the highest to lowest point is, is the height. So now I have tried it, three dimensions, you see? Okay, now, if I don't have the last component, since we have four dimensions we work with, is time. Time is the fourth. How do we apply time? Very simple example. Now, we, we, we use a lot the term of uh, of, of the wedge. A piece of triangle, piece of wood, you put on a door. Let's say the wedge is, high, is maybe two inches, but the door is up two and a half inches. So you put under the door and you try to, the door comes, the, the, the wedge will never stop the door. The door will open up because it's too short, the height is too short, you understand? So now what you have to do is have, have, the, have the, the height of the, of the wedge high. So this means if I have a very, very, some people stay like this, 
So the height is not good, so people can hit you on, on top of it. So that's why you need a very, very strong height. Same with the, with the width, but look. Now, if this is 3 inches, and the door is 2 and a half inches, so it will stop the door by opening. But it will not stop the door if one component pressure is missing. Now, if you put the wedge down, what you do to stop the door, you kick it in. In that moment, you create force forward. If not, the door is strong, you will push the wedge back and it will still open up, okay, if it's strong enough. So, therefore, if I just stand like this, if I may be Peter, so, if you're here, if you stay in Mansa Musa, that's the US, so, maybe this part, so. Okay, now, this Mansa Musa, if Peter doesn't move, look, I can hit him. It's very easy to hit him, it looks like a Swiss cheese there, right? lots of holes. <laughs> now, the same thing, watch, if you're here, so this is the same thing which I meant by if the wedge is not high enough, the end of a triangle. So if he's too close to his chest, okay, so because our protection doesn't start on our chest, it starts from the elbow, because the elbow is a link, so you can move, there's a bumper, there's a tolerance room from here to here. But if this would be here, I couldn't do the bongs out, I couldn't do the tans out, therefore it's here. So therefore your triangle doesn't start on your chest, it starts from your elbow, because you need this to stop the punch here. If he would start on his chest, and I punch him, and you move forward when I come, I will still hit him. Because the time he starts, the time I intercept, so I always will about 10 or 15 inches I will go through. So this means his position is already too close to his body. Same is when he is slightly off line, he's next to his center line, but he's correct position. Correct position about next to the elbow. So from here, so if I punch him, he moves forward, I will hit him anyway. Because his wedge would be totally, uh, the width would be not strong enough, so, okay? So it would be off line, so I can hit him. So but now, if you place him correctly, the same distance here which we have, and here, so if I punch him now, and he moves forward, he puts time in, so I cannot hit him, you see? Now this, this is the thing, and now if he continues, he will, he will split my force, he will deflect my force, right? So, now, thank you. Time is our active movement going forward. So what we try to achieve with this is the impact of a punch is your face. This is what the target is. He will hit you. So what we do is we shorten the time instead of here, already bring it up here. So we have contact. The impact is on your wrist. So from here to here, this distance, he has the intercept. So this means this is for our nerve system, for the sense of touch, enough time to find out which way the pressure goes to, to, be, to give the chance our, our arm to be bended in any direction. And then we use that force which we call borrow enemy's force. That's what we do, to be turned or rotated from his force, okay? So therefore time is very important, this is time, by, 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 by uh, uh, moving forward as soon as the attack comes, okay? So if I have a, a box, since Hassan used to be German champion for Southwest Germany, right? So, if you look at a, a, a jab, jab is something bang and pulling back, right? So I have here, if he jabs me, he does this and then takes it back, bang, bang. So, when I stay like this, I don't move, he can hit me very easy. But he's dancing and he's coming and jabs me, see? When I launch forward, I create pressure. The moment he, he touches my hand, he pushes, I move forward, I put. Now when he withdraws his hand, goes back, he invites me, just like a magnet. If he's very, very fast, so I'm in already. I take the space through that also away for a second punch. Okay? So very important that you, you understand the forward pressure. Very, very important. This goes there as a cheese off. That's why we're rolling. A lot of people... Thank you. Oh, save one second. A lot of people think uh, cheese off is fighting. I have lots of people come over with, from different regions and say, Oh, see for you mean, uh, well, I'm doing so, so many years cheese off and can we do it? And I must check out how you say, hey, listen. I'm not a dummy here, everybody can come here and do cheese out. The cheese out is nothing else than just a method to implant reflexes. Just to make your limbs flexible. Okay, and later, of course, in a broader sense, make your whole body just like a steel spring, okay? So this is what these people understand. And, and, and they always think, oh, touch, and you touch somebody, oh, oh, oh I'm better I touch them, or this is totally rubbish, okay? So it's nothing else a, a, a teaching or training method. Now, so once we understand the center 
like how to mathematically recreate it and, and, and uh, verify our theory so for everybody so it becomes your theory so you place hands, our hands exactly there see our hand a wedge in every direction this way and this way now this gives us uh, as a tactical advantage uh, to uh, expect uh, uh, exception to, for, to a boxer right if he, if he is a you get the boxer and I'm a boxer so this would be our distance if he jabs me I can do this, if he jabs me I can do this so this is our distance so when he leans forward then he touches me he just lean forward boom you see this is okay this is what the boxer do <laughs> so I couldn't box from here this would be not the realistic uh, distance for a box match right this is too far the box there here boom boom okay now when I'm here and Hassan jabs me and leans in, this is when he can hit me. So now, go back in your position, box position. Now he's Hassan, look. All of a somebody puts his hand in front of your nose. Do you think the boxer's gonna stay here? <laughs> what do you wanna do if I'm here? What are you gonna do, Hassan? What's the master learning here? That's it. You see? He will open up because this is too close. He can be the fastest man in the world. The one thing he cannot change is distance. Now which distance is shorter? Is this 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 shorter or this to this? See, he can be fast, he still has to go this, all the way this way. And I just said, if you jab me, <coughs> I'm already there. Do you understand? So therefore he would not stand here, he would, he would go up there. So now, he needs a much, much uh, larger distance of cover to hit me. So I can be very relaxed. So as soon as he moves in, he needs a preparation step. Whatever he wants to do, he has a step, and then punch. So, this is the point. If I stand steps, <coughs> I'm in. So I got, whatever he does, he does this, he needs to walk in and then get in the distance and then watch him hit me. If he does this, I'm in. So at the same time he step, I step, so through that his first step is in, is in preparation, my first step is straight attack. So this is something to do with the distance because also gives you the, the, the protection of your mind zone. Or of our center line, okay? Now this is the shortest distance, but here, in that case, this is the shortest distance. So I put my center line point for me all the way up here. Now, the same thing, this theory is important to protect our lives. But now I can just, just take it down to my floor, so I have a center line from here. But this is just to, to also intercept or cut the kicks and protect my, my lower parts, okay, so my knees. Now if I see this angle, this would be my depth, right? So if you look at here, this is my vertical line and my horizontal line. So here's my center point. Here I have a center line. Now, if, I, if uh, Hassan would give me a, a, a snap kick, so I cut him here. So same, if Hassan punch me with this, now give me a kick and punch. Same effect, same, same technique. So because I have the same, same concept down here with the center line. Or if Hassan punch kicks me with this, so it's the same here. Okay, so now we can combine, doesn't matter. Hassan can be punched with this and kick me with this. So I have no help, so it doesn't really matter. So everything you later do on the center line, you cut in the in in incoming punch. Look, if he punches, you rest this way, yes. Hassan punches, but I'm outdoor, so when I have my elbow low, it is a substitute for the angle triangle. If he's Hassan, look at the effect. So he's splitting. The same thing if my elbow is low. He's split over there. Okay? Now, here is, this is already the side of the wedge. I will split him. If he comes with this, you see? If he comes with this, his head moves too. If you move both. There's still the triangle is always there. Your wedge concept. Now, if your husband comes with this, I mean, if your husband comes with this, I'm diagonal, still the same. So later on, we can, we can mix the punches. This has all something to do with your cheetah. Because everything we do, we apply the center line on it. Okay? So, now, if you look at that, uh, at your, at your chisel, oh, let me kind of finish the legs first. Look, doesn't matter here, it's the same. He can punch me with any hand, I can always deflect his force. This is where really Bruce Lee gets this. Doesn't matter here, it's the same. He can punch me with any hand, I can always deflect his force. This is where really Bruce Lee gets this idea for Jeet Kune Do, eh? intercepting or deflecting punches or intercepting fists. So, this is what you do. You see, when we do it here, you just chain punches, you rest. He does a good cross. Boom, boom, quite soon. Boom, see? 
I deflect his punches the way, whatever he does. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Each time he comes, I can deflect it. So, the same here. If I'm here, if Hassan gives me a cross kick here, look, just by the circular movement, I go off to center line and move my center on me and cut me in two. So, if he gives me a straight kick here, if he gives me a cross kick here, okay, if he gives me a straight kick here, even if he gives me a snap kick here, so I apply it, so it's the same, like uh, the concept is the same with the hand. So I don't need to change, so I don't need to change my concept because it's a kick. So a lot of styles, they change their concept with the hands, they fight like this, with the kicks, they fight like this. And you don't have in a real fighting situation the time for it because everything is very fast. So, oh, what do I have to do now? Okay, so now, we apply the center line on your, on your phone's arm. Like so, what's bones are is nothing else, two arms doing a motion, okay, do, do, doing something. Else. What is the something? Now, if you look at the fight, if the punch comes, I come, we have two rivers, like one river bed, two rivers coming at, uh, with a high speed towards each other, what's happened? When they meet, the pressure will go up like a fountain. And a stronger push will overlap the other one. And the underneath, the other one still will push in a little bit, but the other one will win. So, now what's happening here, when Hassan punches, I punch here, see? Now, since we're in Chisa or in Danchi, single arm Chisa, uh, uh, if Hassan gives me a palm strike, you see, I do this. Or if Hassan gives me a punch, he lifts my talons up. Because he doesn't intercept, he doesn't uh, step in. It's going to be uh, stop time here. Can we stop time here? Because or the pictures in the movie, in the movie, Hassan would punch and step all the way in. No? Maybe. Okay? Or, again, because the pressure would go this way. But here in Ponza or Danchi, without a step, the first part you learn, if Hassan punches, he lifts me up. Because I push and I want to punch too. So this is a hindered fist. Hassan punches, I punch. First we're going to be like, okay? first we're going to be like strong. Yeah? But the person is strong and he steps in, boom, step in, boom, see? Then he will bend my arm and rotate me. Oh, because only because he's stronger, but I'm not pulling back. If I do it wrong, punch and step. Whoop, boy! I see what's happening because I, I, I pull, so there's no pressure forward. So the idea is really you risk your, your arm over once to go forward. And so when he punches me, I want to do this. You see? If he's not strong enough, I don't need a boxer. If you're too strong for your opponent, you just boom. You don't need any time, any bomb. It's the idea. It's the, it's the first principle, right? It's the way free you intercept. You punch me. So hey, why should I bomb though? Or why should I jump if you punch indoor? If I'm stronger than you, I, I win. But if it's Hassan, is, just imagine Hassan is much stronger than me. Punch. Now look. Then he does this to me. Okay. But my hand is not pushing here. I still want to go here. If he stops, I will go here. But because he's stopping the fill on one frame, if Hassan punches me, easy, stop. No step, just punch, be here. Okay? So deep, so. Now if Hassan steps in, now this will happen. Look. Step, 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 Now still, it's a frame, we stop the fill. Okay? So if you're fighting and you go very quick and punch me, very quick. You don't see any bones up. Again, very, very quick. Okay. okay, so very slowly. That's what you see. Because it's not stopped, the film, you don't see bones up. But you see lots of books, people pose, pose, look as similar, but, but technically not. Or if I would use a block, I would be strong, you punch me. People do this sometimes, they call bombs out block or tucks out block, you don't have it. It's not a block. Everything what we do is, is a energy goes forward and somebody interrupts. And the energy still goes forward. See, and this is where we put all this yin and yang. Everybody knows yin and yang, right? Thank you. What is yin and yang? So people say, oh, uh, air and, 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 and uh, not air, dark and uh, light, and woman and man, strong and weak, whatever, right? 
So always the opposite attractions. This is one thing, but they cannot really explain what it is. They just read a book and say so. But then, how you put it in, 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 in martial arts? What does this yin and yang stuff have to do with martial arts? And where is in Wing Chun visible? Yeah, it's pretty much, look, if you have a, in that sense, yin is for, for, the, for the flexible, like the female side, yang is the powerful, and the male side, and we have this together. So if you punch this, let's say you pull my arm and bombs off, in that moment, this is yin, and this one is yang, or yin, yang. So this is, I'm taking over the force, and yang is the power. Or just in a very relaxed punch, if you see this, this is already yin and yang. Maybe visible here, because I'm by myself, it's just yin. This is yin, because it's very relaxed. Yeah, but if I'm here, this is yin. And then the outcome is yang. It's the force, because I can, I let, my arm is so relaxed that my force can go through. Okay, and then the outcome, the effect is yang. It's powerful, boom, the damage. But if I'm like this, and he's still smiling, you see, he's still here. <laughs> because the force is here, I'm always young. So there's no yin. So you have to, just very boom, very relaxed. Therefore, all punches are very relaxed. So this means, if he's here, if he forces with the elbow, maybe I take this guy's big arms. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you understand the energy, if I punch, and then Peter's very strong, can you see? Yes. <laughs> so he's very strong, he has a tight punch. So what's happening? I'm punching, he's punching. Boom, 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 boom. He goes in. See, this is what my arm still wants to drill in. Still wants to go and drill in. This is the first. This is when the two rivers come and, and this one goes on top and the other one goes here. Right? So the pressure. And the other one goes still underneath. This is underneath. This is the big river coming. And this one to go still. This is not all of a sudden doing this. Until the one, one river takes the one with them back, there's a resistance. This happens all here. Now, ooh, now this river comes very strong. Okay? So, this is what's happened. This is already, look, yang, yin, <laughs> okay? Force and flexible. And the same time it comes, at the same time, I'm looking here from a side door. And, and he runs into it. So that's why we call it borrow the opponent's force. So, another thing is, when you, when you look at, you don't, what we say was, well, I'm passive. Lots of uh, thank you. Lots of people use the word passive. In Wing Chun, we actually really not not passive. Passive means like I'm not doing anything. You get punched. Okay? We're all the time active because when you understand what I'm talking, if our energy goes forward, it means we're always active. We're always trying to go forward. But the decision when to do Bongza or Tanda or Cham, whatever this this force is creating is not your decision, it's in the unconscious, because there's something through Jesus you have done for, for years, over, over, one movement, maybe a couple million times, second movement, and then you mix them up, okay, you train them under stress, speed, when you receive first time, it's slowly, okay, but later, very slowly, technically, but later you, you have to do it under every circumstances, stress, force, very soft, and then on the, on the speed, basically creating different atmospheres that you, your muscle memory and your nerve system follows and memorizes these motions, this, this stress, this, this pressures. And then you, your brain, since it's a new movement, is always concentrating and trying to figure out, oh, it is analyzing. Oh, 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 the pressure, see, and then you get boom, you always get like boom. So the whole body doesn't work together, okay? But after a while, you do it for mid, one million times, so you, you very simply said, you, you make your brain become bored with this movement. So your brain after a while <laughs> or relaxes, and, and your brain can do something else now while your physique is taking over. And this is what we call the unconsciousness, a reflex movement. So this means this is not anymore your decision, so that's why people always say passive, but passive actually is really the, 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 the wrong word. I mean, I would call the... the unconscious decision, because it's not a decision you make, okay? So what you do is consciously, is aware, you go forward in it. And then what's happened becomes automatic, because this is a reflex now. This is being trained into your physique, 
into your muscle memory and everything else is, he does, his force does. If he's too soft, you hit because this is what you want to do. If he's too strong, he will bend your arm. Okay? In any direction. So if it's here, if you, have, you have pretty much four, four, four sides on your arm if you, if you want so. So if I have it here, look. Maybe on each arm, so it's just to dodge you still. If Dabi would punch me indoor, so he, he would push my pressure back, was it is strong to push, we call it jumps out or sinking elbow. So if he, if he does the same movement but he pushes to the outside over there, look, then we call the cows off. So he can push over here, one direction, jump, or the other side, cow. The same from the outdoor. So you have indoor two sides. For cow and jump and outdoor, if he pushes across my body, you will bump. Or if you just half an inch of over my center line this way creates bump. If you go to this side, creates time. So you have four sides. And if you take my whole body with both hands, he has two hands, so I have four sides. You have this side and two inside. But each arm itself has four sides. And if you have this, I have four sides now. For the whole. Okay? So therefore, uh, the center line is always everywhere. Now, thank you. How we position our arm and pull down. All these measurements are not just to define your center line. This also helps you where to put your arms. Sometimes you go to a seminar, there are a couple hundred people, and you, you go there and uh, see who is doing something, you know, performing bong sao, you go like bing, okay, and then a couple of instructors walking around correcting the students. Now you have one, one instructor, let's make an example, uh, let's say Frank here. So, and, uh, okay, let's say I'm the see I'm practicing Bongsa with you and I have all you guys, all you guys are instructors and you come and correct Frank. You make a Bongsa. So, now Peter, maybe you come and maybe Sabine come. So we go like this, okay? So, now, I, I go like this, so I go like this. You Bongsa head over here. Now Sabine comes to this guy there yeah, and now you go over there, you put him somewhere else. No, no, no. <laughs> so, the next guy comes. So what's happened to this guy is I think he's gonna be like uh, he's gonna be really exhausted and totally confused. And, hey, I think we all make the same system. I think this is Wing Chun. One guy puts my one here, one there, one there, so he's got totally confused. And he goes back home to his school and accuses his own seeing or sifu or whatever. Oh you're teaching me for many years the wrong bongs I quit. So it becomes a technical matter and people are arguing because, why? Because they don't understand the center line theory. Once you understand and your student understand center line theory, they can correct themselves. They know where the mathematics are. They know where the bombs are in a form because the form has no pressure, nobody so has to be really here. Okay? So therefore, no matter if I give you a wrong correction, you can always go back to the, the concept of, of the center line and put, correct yourself. So therefore, understanding is number one. If I teach people, I make sure they understand what they're doing, the goal they're trying to, to, to achieve, the reasons, what's happening, how this happens. So once the student understands the exercise itself and the goal, he will 100% learn. But if you just tell him just to listen, imitate me, he will not learn. Because he will always keep in questions. Okay? So therefore understanding is very, very important. And as a good instructor, you have to make people understand. Now, so, okay, you, you see, you see, the, the, the width is always depending on, the, on the, the width of your opponent, okay? If somebody is too narrow, because we always explain to put the elbow on the center line, has a touch to the center line, has been narrow, if the partner's shoulder is too broad, so you can hit him without even any contact. So, when the opponent's out, if you're too narrow, it's very easy for me to hit through. Same thing for me, if I'm too open, my elbows are too out, so she can hit me, or, or maybe from this side, you see? So therefore, same thing with the center line, the up and down has to go with the width, uh, tight or, or, or open up. So the indoor has to open up, the outdoor has to tighten in. Okay, so Sabine is uh, indoor, this means since I'm more broad than her, my shoulder, so she has to open up a little bit. But the angle, the elbow has to point towards the center line and, and the wrist forwards to me a little bit out. So this is the same, see, and same for me. My, my, my elbow, my uh, hooks out, is more in. This part, the inside of your forearm, is like a uh, brake pad on a car. Okay, so when Sabina attacks me here, see? 
Okay? See how she's pushing my, my, my skin back? So when I put pressure forward, so I can stop her. And if she goes too much, in it, I, 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 I hit, hit her, right? So now, if she really goes to her target, which is here, I can stop her. Okay? So again, if I would be to open, of course, my, my folks would be here, it's very easy for her to hit me. Vice versa, if she should be too, too narrow with her time, though, I can hit her. So this concept goes for both arms. So when we switch around and do the Hunzaus, the changing wrist, you see? So if she's too open, I can hit her. She elbows in and she push, she can stop me. She can feel that over here. Now she's too narrow right now, you see? Okay? The same example again, if I can have the, the stairs, please. The steps. So just put it here. <coughs> Maybe you're taller than so if you go on top of it, see so she has a pipe, that's why Wing Chun, why Wing Chun's system is also, the, the size doesn't matter. And, and if you would stay in a normal position, and, and you're in your normal position, this, this would be the center line normally, and this doesn't look good. <laughs> so therefore, he, he didn't hit being hit here, and she hits being hit here, so we both are, he's descending and she's accenting. You see now we have the diagonal, the diagonal line here, everybody can see it more clear now. Okay? Now, if Sabina would be here and, and you punch Sabina because you're taller, you punch just indoor up and touch his nose and step all the way and lock your elbow. Punch? Right. The indoor. Okay, that's fine with the elbow, that's not bad, but the same just from the indoor. Okay? And then lock your elbow. Now you see, the way it works on this, you can split the force over here. So, therefore, a small person can split the force and then go in. Same thing. Or, if you would be here, and you could punch, she could still have her bongs on and be rotated this way. And then just step forward and punch, of course. Okay? So there's no problem here at all, huh? Thank you. So, take this away, please. Thank you. So therefore, see, no matter how tall or short or how, how, if I'm too narrow, so I have to open up, you see, my wedge. I'm by myself, somebody, I see someone's really big, and my hand is up here. Somebody's tall, my hand is up here, somebody's short, I'm here. So our center line is really flexible all the time, depends on the size of our opponent, okay? So um, what I will explain to you also is now a little bit the footwork of Ming Chun, how we step. Because your hand can only absorb incoming force if your footwork is coordinated. Because if you're too stiff with your, with your uh, position in your legs, uh, if I have you, Peter. Now I can borrow your big bicep again, please, of course. But if I cannot rotate, not turn, and he's coming in and punching me very heavy, so you see these kind of things because then it's harder than hard because I, I don't know how to rotate. My, my, my footwork is very poor. So if Peter Hart hits me, then what I do, I go start stopping with the force, and that looks very stiff. Instead of if you powerful, fast, it's very soft. Cause, so I can transform his force here into my into my body, into my legs. I'm here. Even I'm sitting on this, it's 100% weight in the back, and if Peter pushing me, I'm still very strong, very strong. I'm going to push me very hard. See, I'm, I'm very, very strong here, see? The push out. So, no matter how hard. So, I can punch. It's very soft here. I'm not using the muscles that are unnecessary for this exercise. But if I would use it mentally, because I want to do it, I'm making the decision myself, then I'm going to be like, and he pushes me now, so you can, you can destroy my balance very easy, okay? So therefore, flexibility is the best. So, uh, thank you. Flexibility, with Ming Chun, we are not weak or stiff. We are strong and soft. So if you have an iron bar, an iron bar, and you put softness, it becomes a steel spring. Like, okay, this is what we are powerful, but still the same time flexible. Okay? Stiff is like a branch on a tree, the wind comes <coughs> and uh, softness is like the grass in the wind. Okay? So we have both, we are strong and, and flexible. And then soft creates flexibility. Okay? So, the same thing with our foot. Uh, when the iris, when, when you 